Hey guys, welcome back to the tutorial series of how to make bucket plugins. This is going to be the first plugin we're making, and it's going to be the first part. Uh, this is probably going to have multiple parts uh, due to the fact that uh, it's it's a bigger plugin. So I'm going to tell you now what we're going to do. We're going to be doing a area protection plugin. Um, that's not so basic. So um, yeah, we're just going to jump right into it. So last episode, uh, if you're following this by uh, step by step from the beginning, last episode was the very first one, uh, which was just the basic frame and the plugin that just said it's enabled and then it's disabled. So now the first thing we're going to do is make a new Java project. Hold on, let me get into the screen here. Java project, and then name it something like um, area. No, no. Uh, let's do force field and um, then we press uh, finish and then now we have a empty source folder which we will create a new class in which will be called uh, oops we're gonna make a new package in there actually and the package is going to be called force field and then after that, inside force field, we're going to create a new class called force field. After you're done with that, we're going to go to force field, the um, the Java project, and we're going to go to properties. Inside the properties, Java build path, libraries, add external jars, and add your craft bucket zip <coughs> dot jar. Sorry, well, it's, there's not a lot of difference between jar files and zip files, but okay. And after we're done with that, we can use uh, methods from the bucket uh, appy. So, in our main class here now that we created, we're going to extend. Wow. <laughs> there we go. Extends Java plugin. And we're going to have to import it or control shift O for automatic ones. And it'll bring up like a prompt. If uh, if there's multiple uh, variations you could be using for that method <coughs> or class, um, after that we need our basic uh, on on enable and on disable. But we could just go ahead and copy these. I'm gonna copy the whole content back in here. So now we're done with that. Let's just close out of our first plugin and the plugin to YML as well, since we don't need it really. Well, we could copy it over, but. Let's just make a new one here. So uh, I'm gonna go and press on force field, the Java project, and then go into new file and then name it plugin.yml. I won't be going over this uh, verbally each time. Just this is the first project we're making since uh, I showed you how to do the whole thing. So it's gonna be have a it's gonna have a name, and the name is going to be called force field. Whoops. Oh, whoops. <laughs> And then the version will be uh, 0 0.1, and the main will be. For, uh, let's just copy this over here. Force field. Dot force field because it's in the package force field with the file force field. Save it, and now this is also a functionable plugin. Um, hold on, let me center things here. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Uh, so now we have a functioning plugin, but this is nothing. So the first thing we're going to do now is just keep these whatever. But we're going to make a new folder inside this package and call it objects because we're going to be creating our own objects. And we're going to make a new class and let's call it a area. Um, and then the area class will not extend anything, but it's going to have its own uh, can, um, method, so uh, the constructor, uh, so it's going to be called public area, and it's going to just do stuff basically, uh, and it's going to have, uh, it's going to, it's going to have a few things, and it's going to have a string name, it's also going to have, um, let's see, an array list and it's going to store locations equals <coughs> I don't know uh, a new array list and it's going to be uh, locations I guess is the correct way to do this control shift O the bucket one 
Okay. <clears throat> and uh, I guess we should, we can already declare here. So equals uh, just going to be called this. This is essentially just creating it. There we go. So later we can just add and take away and whatnot. Uh, why does it? I'm pretty sure it needs constructor. So location. There's, there's nothing wrong with this, is there? <laughs> Whatever. It's just going to be that. Okay. Uh, it's going to take a name, so it's going to have its own name, location, and then it's going to have a string, an array of strings, uh, and it's going to be called owners, and then it's going to, that's pretty much all we need actually, I think. It's called locations. Okay, so this, the, when, we, when you create a new area, it's going to have to uh, get a few variables received and it's going to be a uh, string which is going to be the name of it and it's going to need um, I think that's actually it since we only have to give it a name uh, and everything else will be uh, no actually we're also going to need a location L1 and a location L2 because we're going to use that to generate uh, its area <clears throat> so uh, to actually generate the blocks inside of a cube by just picking the two locations we're going to need a very simple uh, algorithm or just some calculations and to do that we're going to use the two locations and then we're going to we're going to make a, a method for it so we're going to say public uh, it's going to return well it should, it should return an, uh, an array array list and it's going to return location locations and it's going to be called generate cube and it's going to take two parameters location l1 and location l2 so now we made it it's going to have to return something for now it's going to return null so inside of here we're going to create um, a temporary array so uh, a list of locations so we're gonna say array list location temp equals new whoops array list location empty constructors everything should already be uh, imported so uh, after that we're gonna be adding to the temp for each cube after we, regener we generate the cube and then add it one by one and then later return the temp here as uh, the, an array list of locations so we're gonna go down here and then we're gonna first of all, we're gonna declare some integers because we need to get the minimum x and we need maximum x um, minimum y max y minimum z and max z so instead of just creating them one by one each line you can create them all in once well and it makes them zero the default value for an integer when it's not declared is zero um, and then now we're gonna have to first think of something so you know when you select the two uh, areas of the cube uh, it can it can go inside and outward sort of depends where you select it I can't really explain it but to fix that issue we're just gonna make a little check here so we're gonna say if l1 dot get whoops geez, dot get x oh wow dot get x is less than an, uh, l2 dot get x I guess we can use the get block x2 as well, but whatever. So if, if it's so, then we're going to say minimum x equals l1 dot get x. And max x equals l1 dot get x. What's wrong with this? We need to... Okay, get block 
Okay, that's better. Okay, uh, to use ints, uh, it's just you need to use the get block x method. It's gonna return an integer instead of I assume a double for just get block get, for get x. Yeah, because block can only be on exact ints. They can't be on point something locations. Okay, so uh, and then we're gonna have to say else. We're only dealing with um. Let's put a curly back here. We're only dealing with x here, so we're gonna have to copy and paste this over and over again. However, now we're gonna say else this. Oh, this should be L2, by the way. And with the L statement, the top one should be L2. So we're just we're just checking which one should be where. And then to make to clear your code up, just do uh, Control Shift F, and we'll clear your code up. Control Shift O means get the uh, imports, and Control Shift F is clean up. Okay, so now we're gonna copy this whole chunk here, paste it once, twice. And then over here, we're going to highlight it. You're going to do Control F, find X, replace Y, and only the selected lines, and replace all. Uh, and then we're going to have to change this here. Oh, whoops, max and max. Okay, <clears throat> still faster than just doing one by one. Select this, Control F, find all. X, um, actually let's do K sensitive as well. And then change it to Z. Replace all. That's nah, still gonna do that, isn't it? That nah, should, should be fine. Oh, we did not make this a capital. There we go. Now it's all good again. So after we're done with that, <coughs> uh, we, we fixed the problem with um, having to check which corners where and if it's an inside out or a normal square and then now we can get on to actually calculating each block inside so for this um, we're going to oh, let's just change the return scan we're gonna return temp well I think this is true I'm just gonna type that <laughs> okay now we're gonna create a for loop and inside the for loop we're gonna go int uh, I equals minimum X and if x well, while x is less than or equal to maximum I think it's yeah max x then x, uh, i plus plus there we go oops why did I put an x here <laughs> okay so this is just a for loop and then we're gonna copy this put it inside of it and inside of here too and then this one's gonna be actually let's call this one x x X. This one should be a Y. Whoops. I said Y. Y and Y. And this one's going to be a Z. Okay. So now it's going to loop through all the X, Y's, and Z's. And it's going to be. Uh, we're going to create a new location here. So location uh, lock equals new location and then inside the constructor we're gonna go well first we have to enter the world so l one dot get world just just an easy way to get world um, and then the next parameter is gonna be it's, it's in the order of x y z and then close it off and then now all we have to do is add this location to temp so uh, temp dot add lock so this will iterate through all the blocks inside those two locations. It's well, it's we're also checking if it's inside out or not inside out. And so yeah. Uh, oh, we actually also have to change this. Whoops. I got too uh, got too out of myself. Okay, there we go. And then now it's going to just generate the block. So whenever we call this method and feed these two information into it, it's going to return some blocks. So here, um, now the area is going to do one thing now. So it's going to set the name to the name, the string name we enter. But we have to change this to this dot name equals name. So this equals this. And uh, we don't really need to store locations. Like, I guess we should store the locations because we have to recalculate them later. So we're also going to store two locations. So location L1 and location L2 